Hello, everyone. Uh, today, I'm going to talk about the hidden costs of external tools extracting data from AWS. So, at first, agenda. A little uh, introduction. Who am I? Why should you li listen to me? Uh, the background to why I'm giving this talk. Some uh, cost categories. Uh, then go through some data examples from that, that extracted data. Uh, a few examples and one of, one of the most important thing, how to optimize it. First, who am I? My name is Victor, uh, and I work with cloud, like most of you do here. Uh, I'm from Sweden. Uh, I work as a senior cloud advisor uh, from a company called Knowit. Uh, I'm an AWS certified solutions architect professional. I'm a well-architected practitioner. And I lead the uh, AWS user group in uh, Sweden Young Shopping. Uh, I work in IT for the last 13 years. And by day, I work with uh, helping enterprise customers to build their AWS landing zones. Uh, and by night, I tinker with everything related to tech, like everything from coding, IoT, 3D printing, AI, ML. So some background to why why is this interesting, this topic? So I have a background in support. And from that, I've always had a genuine interest from actually from data and statistics to help us realize what actually is wrong or what's not working. So by, by having that background, I've I acquired quite some, some interest. And the, the idea of this has been in the back of my head for quite some time. Uh, and during the talk, I want to highlight some unknown or less known costs when using these external tools. And I'm by no means op an opponent to actually using external tools. They can be great. They can have some great benefits. But you just need to know how they are affecting your environment when you are architecting your setup. If we then move into the cost categories, uh, I have, I've uh, divided them into three different categories. First one, your workload. And what does that consist of? The AWS service consumption. Things like EC2, RDS, Lambda, DynamoDB, all the parts that actually is running your actual workload. And then we have the AWS native tools. Um, some of them are included and do not add any additional cost of usage. And some do add some costs. These are things like CloudTrail, CloudWatch, those types of uh, native tools. Then we go to the external tool. What's the cost for an external tool? Yeah, usually the license. They can look all, all different. Uh, they can everything from like account, uh, amount of accounts you have to the amount of data you're extracting to yeah, a lot of different ways. But then we have, I would say, the interesting part here which is the hidden costs, or less known costs. And first here we have the, I would go to the affected services. For example, how does a security tool react when there is increased amount of API traffic that is uh, API calls in your environment? Um, do you need additional trails in CloudTrail, for example, to, to share with that external tool? Or your SSM or system manager being used, like Explorer, OpCenter, Automation, things like that, they might be affected by actually using these external tools. Then the infrastructure. Do you need to add some uh, things within your infrastructure in order for you to actually make this work? Do you have to create some endpoints? Do you need to add additional bu S3 buckets or uh, different lambdas to s s extract data? Then we have data exfiltrations. As you most of you know, uh, 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 ingesting data into AWS is usually not that expensive. It's when you want it, out, want it back out. Serving that data to, to your customers, that's usually what the co when the cost starts occur. And then we have API calls. Some calls, yeah, they are free. Uh, but not all of them. Some of them most definitely aren't. So. And we will explore that, those API calls in those later slides to, uh, to some examples for the ones that actually could do cost something. Uh, then we have data categories. 
I would say that this is like the data categories that the different type of tools would be interested in. So if we start by the different type of security tools, we have, for example, security tools, we have monitoring tools, we have asset scanning tools. And if we start then by what type of data would the, uh, the security tool be interested in, what type of uh, would a monitoring tool ha be interested in, and same thing for asset scanning. And as you see here, when it comes to security, it, they, they might be interested in CloudTrail to get what's happening in your environment to, to, to act upon that to alarm, for example. Uh, for CloudWatch, for uh, analyzing logs. Car duty, some of them have integrations with, uh, they might be redundant in, ca in some cases to use both that and external tool. You will see that as well in later light, slides. And then we have like AWS Config and Security Hub. But, and then we come to the monitoring. Usually it's CloudWatch, that's an interesting one. And then Lambda. And the reason, one of the reasons why I mentioned Lambda is that it might be used for actually uh, serving data or when you have a sidecar file or things like that. Uh, sidecar solutions for, that, for, for uh, sending the data further. And then we have asset scanning, which is basically a tool for uh, creating inventory of your different uh, resources. And so you have that for different purposes. And those usually it is just API calls and in some cases using Systems Manager to actually go into the different uh, EC2 instances to, mo to actually yeah, change, uh, scan the assets on those hosts as well. All these, and all those different tools have an impact on your environment and might affect the other tools. So an asset scanning tool might create extra work for the security tools, both internal and external ones. And a monitoring tool might create more logs in CloudWatch if you use a custom delivery of metrics using like sidecar solutions for Lambda or Fargate. So that's covering a little bit when it comes to the data categories. Then, go to the first example here. Um, let's start with the basics of an API call. When an external services or tool want to look at your, look through your environment, the, the, usually the default way is to actually make quite a few different API calls. And what happens when an API call is made in AWS? It gets loaded to CloudTrail for all the purposes. So how can a chain of events look like then? Uh, let's uh, think of the scenario of like an API call is made to EC2 to check the configuration of a security group to retrieve and retrieve that info to external system to determine, is this according to policy? Do you want, really want that port 22 open to the world or yeah? So first step, yeah, a data call is made to describe the security groups in one region, since they are region-based. That event is then recorded in CloudTrail. And here you have a few questions you need to answer yourself. Do you have more than one trail? Is it explored to S3? Is it that uh, bucket replicated to other buckets? Are you forwarding those logs to CloudWatch? Do you have other tools uh, consume those S3 logs? All those factors, they add costs. And then the third step here is that GuardDuty scan those events in CloudTrail. And that's a cost as well. So this work workflow is normal and it's expected. It's, uh, no, no, but you need to be aware of the, of the cost for actually doing this. So in this workflow, we if you start to look at the different aspects of what the different costs are, we have the API call. Yeah, that API call, that's, that's not a cost, so that's zero. Uh, Cloud trail, it's zero for the f for first default trail. Uh, the first copy uh, exported to S3, still zero dollars. The second copy is about two dollars per 100,000 management events or, and, or 10, 000, 10 cents per 100,000 data events. Then we have the storage in S3, which is Oh, 2.3 cents per gigabyte. And then we have guard duty, which is $4 per 1 million events scanned. And then if you're using KMS for storing, those data, storing that data, uh, yeah, of course, that, that's cost as well. So let's do some math. For, let's say for the tool to keep track of the configuration, an alarm or remediate uh, a non-compliant config, let's assume that the API call is done every 30 minutes to be a bit generous. 
Uh, so let's see, we had two, two calls uh, every minute hour times 24 hours times five days. That's 114, uh, 14,000 for the event. So not that many, as you see there. One API call, that's that many a month. So, but the thing is, when you start adding those up, you, for example, in one of the examples I've looked through and uh, worked with is that we do 250 different API calls uh, each time. And doing that and, and multiply that, we get 360,000 events a month. That's a bit more. So when we do that and we start to add those costs within this, it actually gives you a cost of, yeah, a little less than one and a half dollar a month per region. And then we say, then the default regions in an environment in an AWS account is about 17, uh, plus minus a few, uh, when they release new ones. But we ha here we have, so we multiply that with 17 of these regions, which gives us 24 and a half dollars a month. That's still manageable. Not that bad, but that's on one account level. Let's say that you have an enterprise environment like with 500 accounts, and you start to multiply this by 500. Let's give you $12,000 a month just to get the data out for, your for the tool to actually uh, be useful. That's a bit more. <laughs> And that's on top of the license cost, of course, of the external tool. So if you go to the next example, uh, we're going to look into CloudWatch metrics. Uh, and this is for, I can ask a question, who here is working with uh, hundreds of accounts in an enterprise environment? Yeah, a few. So you, you should know the struggle of add, uh, adding costs up. Uh, for the second software, we're going to look into monitoring tools, more specifically how the cost of CloudWatch actually is, is affected. So uh, you've chosen to implement a great new external monitoring tool that gives you some night graph and insights to workload. Awesome. But then you realize that you're still getting billed for CloudWatch, even though you're not stopped using it, because you're using external tools. Yeah, why? Yeah, of course, part of the data that the external tools are using is highly likely it's being fetched from CloudWatch because that's where the metrics for the different uh, services are stored. And that's usually use, uh, done by get, using the get metric data or, uh, and the list metrics API calls. And these have a cost of one cent per thousand metric requests. In a normal utilization account I looked into, it's, you can find over, over 100 different metrics. So for, to make it easy for us, we're going to do, uh, do some calculations and ba based on that. Each metric data request can, call, uh, can include five statistics. Uh, and so you, want to, so you can limit that down to 160 calls. And how often do you need to do those, those update those values? CloudWatch retrieves metrics every three to five minute intervals. And uh, it make, makes it easy to, let's say, five, every 50 minutes, so four times an hour. Uh, so 160 calls, four times an hour. Sorry, I forgot this one. Um, quite simple layout here. Um, but when you start to add those up, you have your uh, uh, 4,600 uh, 4, 6, uh, calls per month per account. And for one region, that's $4.6. Not bad. Multi-account region, same thing here, $78. That's a bit more. Uh, but using those, that information, like, can you guess how much that is when you start adding up that with a 500 account again? That's a lot for fetching metrics. So if you then look into optimizing, that, this is the, here is the interesting part. One thing is always evaluate the additional cost from using that external tool. So you are aware when you start using it, like this is how much it will actually cost us. So, you're not, so you don't get a shock the fir after the first month when you got your AWS bill that has increased after actually adding an external tool. 
So, and discuss that with your supplier. And how can we optimize this in a way? Do we need to fetch all that? Um, limit it to regions that you're using. I've been working in uh, setups where you have um, some accounts who are multi-region, some are single region, and, but most of them are actually just a few base regions that they are using, like four out of 17. So, but the thing is, it's not as easy as setting your IAM policy for that role that's used for the integration to not allow those regions, because they will actually, if the external tools is still trying to do those requests to those regions, that denied, act, denied uh, action will still show up in CloudTrail, incur some cost, if guard duty, for example. So you should uh, talk with your vendor there to see, can we limit it to certain regions we actually are using? Uh, then we have reducing the frequency of those requests. How often do we actually need that data? If it, you're using a security tool and we're using it for compliance purposes to see how is our security posture and not for actually alarming or security events, then you might not need to do it more than once a day because who actually is looking at those reports more than once a day? Uh, highly unlikely. Uh, and for example, for monitoring uh, uh, purposes, you can as well fetch time series of data so you don't need, need to do it every five minutes to, in order for you to actually get the data. Uh, a high resolution of that data. Then we have a redu uh, sorry. Uh, provide data using, for example, S3. See if you can find different ways to actually give that data to the external tool. Can it be uh, combined into a, a file, put it to S3, and they can actually fetch it from there, instead of they, they making thousands of API calls to fetch that data? That might be a solution. Then. And most importantly, don't collect more data than you actually need. Like with the example of 800 metrics, I doubt that there's many accounts that actually use 800 different metrics, uh, but they are what's available. For example, if you're using mostly S3, Lambda, and so on, those are the services you might want to integrate with external tools to get, fetch that information. Otherwise, you'll have data that is not used and just incurs costs to you. So this is actually what I have for you. Uh, if you have any questions for me, I'll be outside here. You feel free to, to talk to me if you're curious. Uh, and uh, please fill out the survey in the mobile app and reach out to me on these uh, contact, contact points if you have any questions.